Hello there. Welcome to my uh, my new and updated all missions tutorial for GTA Vice C. Uh, as some of you may know, for about a couple of months now there's been a new route, uh, but all missions is never super like competitive. There's only usually a couple of people playing it due to its like difficulty and length, so um, new route hasn't been seen too much, so it may be new to quite a few people. It was definitely new to me. I only recently learned it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to remake my All Missions tutorial using Rushko's lovely gameplay once again. Thank you very much to him. Uh, I do have his permission. Nobody call their lawyers, don't worry. Um, so we're going to start off. Um, Marushko does uh, not exactly the safest strats, but I will tell you where there are safer alternatives um, as we go along. There are two mandopes in this route, which are completely optional, and they're not that much quicker, so you don't have to go for it. Uh, you may not have seen this strat before, it's a consistent cop car spawn, but it requires like restarting your game in between each attempt, so most of you may not want to go for it. Um, doing the Molotov strat is completely fine. Now if you don't know what the Molotov strat is, uh, you probably shouldn't be here, which may sound elitist, but let me uh, let me explain. So this is exactly the same as my first uh, All Missions tutorial, where I'm going to say that in order to attempt All Missions, you should have at least, I would say, sub one hour in GTA Vice City, any percent no SSU. That's the beginner category that most people learn on. I have a tutorial that covers all like the tricks needed for that speedrun. In I'll put it in the description. If you don't know what I'm talking about during this video, then you should very much check that video out first and then come back here. Now, of course, some people watch these tutorials and will never vi uh, speedrun Vice City, and that's completely fine too. Uh, but if you actually want to learn this category, I would very much recommend at least a comfortable sub one hour. Uh, just so you have, like, it, it proves that you have a decent grasp of the mechanics, and you'll know what I'm talking about without without me having to stop and explain every single intricate detail. Because in No SSU for beginners, it makes sense to explain those details. But in All Missions, which is two and a half hours, you know, uh, on, like, average skill level, of a lot of these very intricate... Um, and even some new methods that you'll see. Um, it is very easy to get confused. So that's the reason I would put that semi-elitist um, requirement there. So as you can see, it's playing on Japanese version, exactly the same as no SSU. Uh, the two, your keybinds should be around the same. You won't have to change too much. What I would recommend is that one thing that you'll need, which I don't think you use in no SSU anymore, is a method of holding submission down when you're outside of the vehicle. So uh, you, for that, you need to bind submission in a car and look behind on foot to the same bind. And you'll need your hold call key, which you should have for no SSU. And one more thing that I would recommend is having a key that you can hold calls on that you can comfortably fly the VCN helicopter with while also holding that button. So I use caps lock, which is rebound to a macro on my mouse. But I can't use my mouse um, to hold calls because I'm using WASD and the, Mac the arrow keys at the same time. So I have like, I don't have three hands, right? So what I would recommend instead doing is I actually hold caps lock with my little finger and then fly on the keyboard usually. So just any setup like that that works for you, as long as you can go ahead um, and fly a VCN heli with, you know, reasonably moderate speed because you'll be on a timer later on. Um, while also being able to hold on to a call through an entire mission. So, pretty much the start is exactly the same as no SSU. Uh, this is all pretty similar. Marushka does a couple of different strategies, as I mentioned. Um, instead of doing the Molotov start, he does the consistent cop car, he man dupes the phone, just stuff like that. Um, those are just optimizations, they are faster, you can go for them if you want to, but they're much more difficult, um, and less consistent, obviously. And then, the two man dupes that I'm speaking of uh is the first one is he'll mandupe death row which if you think manduping death row that's pretty unheard of you would be completely right um but the reason you mandupe death row is because you want an on mission zero call for uh the rubout dupe so rubout gives you fifty thousand dollars when you complete it and obviously if you dupe it it'll give you 100k that 100k allows you to do Malibu early, which is what this reroute is all about. It's about doing Malibu early, because then you can use the shootist inside the Malibu club, the second mission, to insta-pass Demolition Man, which is like a five minute, I'm sure you all know what Demolition Man is at this point. But the point is, it's a really long and boring mission, so insta-passing it is really good. So, uh, yeah, 
The... What was I saying? The death row mandu is not super fast, and I'll, I'll show you a, a super easy way um, of dealing with it. Also, as a quick note, if you're wondering if this is, like, your internet lagging or something, it isn't. Uh, Marushko's VOD seems to have some dips in frames, uh, but it's it's more than readable enough, so it should be fine. Readable. Viewable, I should say. And then the other Mandu was present in the old um, guide, if you remember that one. And essentially what it is, is instead of doing uh, three cherry poppers like you would do in the safe route, because you need, like, enough assets to start CTC, exactly the same as you would in no SSU, except you already have a certain amount of assets. Um, instead of doing three cherry poppers, you do two cherry poppers, then you man dupe the save marker at Cadmageddon, start Cadmageddon for the insta pass, and then you dupe hit the courier to get the, ass the asset count. So this is the first deviation in route from no SSU, is as soon as you complete Jury Fury, uh, you go and make the close replay here, Make sure that you delay the first F2 press. Because otherwise if you make the, the replay too quickly, like immediately after the mission passes, you'll um... What you'll do is you'll start the rampage again that you have. Also, uh, Marushko's gameplay hasn't been super clean here because like he hasn't put a lot of effort into all missions yet in the new route. But that bump was intentional. Uh, I very much assume so anyway. Um, because what you want to do here is you want to get below 83 health. I'm sure some of you have seen this in No Issue. Um, get below 83 health, so then you'll die to the explosion without having to park your bike on Riot. So you can just throw the bike. It saves like a second, maybe. A little minor optimization. What I would usually recommend doing is setting up a slide like Marushko did. Um, after making the close replay and then grabbing the Uzi nearby. Um, that's just opposite Ken's office. I forget which gun he has here. Oh, yeah, he has a shotgun, of course. Um, so Marushko has a shotgun because of the cop car start, but if you're doing Molotov start, um, I'll quickly get up a clip if you give me a second. I'll show you how to deal with this in the more safe route. So here's my super old PB at this point, uh, but it gets the job done. So you make the close replay here. Notice how I delayed making the replay. Um, and just make sure you clear that cache before you make the other one too quickly. And then you bail off just on the corner, then you slide, switch to the pistol, and then you just grab the Uzi here, which is a replacement for the shotgun, rather than grabbing the shotgun during uh, back alley brawl. And then you just go push the bike as normal, and then start riot. Nice and easy. So this coming up is quite a minor optimization. Again, you don't have to do this, it's just Marushko is going to go for it, because it's ever so slightly faster. Um, but what you do is you basically set up a slide during a phone call. So the way this works is that you hold either left or right. Um, so you hold D and then you press either S or W, depending on your weapon. Marushko uses S here. So you hold D, you press uh, S and then immediately uh, do a fast replay. So you press like F3, F1. Uh, the timing of that is pretty difficult, honestly. Uh, so it might take a bit of getting used to, so I'd only recommend for that for like really experienced players. But what that does is it allows you to get the pistol uh, for Treacherous Swine. If you're not comfortable with doing that slide, then that's totally fine. Um, just do... Instead, just take the call as normal, like jog to the bike, and then just chainsaw uh, Gonzalez instead of using the pistol. It's only a couple of seconds slower. So as soon as you kill Gonzalez, as you see there, you want to, as soon as you kill him, uh, you want to head towards this marker and then immediately play the close replay. So you don't have to do the little bribe star stuff that you do in No SSU because you already have the close replay and that gets rid of the two stars immediately. So what you can do is you can buffer the close replay while also exiting um, Gonzalez's uh, penthouse or whatever. And then as soon as you come out, you'll have no stars, get on the bike, and the mission instantly passes, because you've lost your wanted level. That's much quicker than obviously slowly driving around like you would no SSU going back to Cortez. Because we're not going to Cortez, so this is the first mission route difference. Is you still head right here, but you're going to head towards uh, Roadkill instead. So this is one of, one of the bullshit missions. There's quite a few in all missions, as you can imagine when you're doing like 
three times as many fucking missions as you do in No SSU. But you park the bike just here. Um, be careful with that where you park. Uh, Marushko told me the reference for where you park is always make sure that you park. I'll show you really quick. Uh, make sure that your bike is always on the other side of the road, like from this line. Because if you park it on this side, then it might despawn because it's too close to the phone. So be careful about that. But yeah, so Roadkill, this guy spawns and he can drive absolutely like anywhere pretty much. He has like a, loads of different routes that he can go. Um, and you just got to find like a best the best way to kill him depending on his route. So if he's driving right towards you, you can bail off the bike and chainsaw him. <coughs> if he's driving away from you, you can pit maneuver him with the bike that knocks him over and then run him over with the bike or chainsaw him. Um, that just takes a bit of getting used to because it is random. There's not too much you can do about it, unfortunately. So Marush goes smart here, he's using the close replay to shot on the fades. Uh, you've already seen that in No SSU, most likely. Uh, a lot of runners do that now. It's quite a, quite an old strat, relatively. I think there was two cars, uh, like, mounting each other. That was a bit, was a bit hot. So this is also the new more shootout. Again, this is minor, and I... Like, completely okay if you don't do it. But basically what you do uh, is you park the bike here rather than throwing it down. And then you go into the cutscene, make sure you don't sprint. And then you wait, you see until he moves, and then skip the cutscene. Then you hop down, switch to the chainsaw as you drop, and then just hold left click as you cancel the fall. And that gives you the briefcase immediately without having to chase him out here. Again, very minor, quite difficult, so... Uh, make sure to, you can practice that if you want, but if you just want to do the, the more shootout that you're used to in No SSU, that's completely fine too. That's what I do, because, uh, you know, I'm slow, but who cares. What is this, a speedrun, am I right? So you do the tree dismount there, it's um, pretty difficult to do as well. You need a set amount of speed, Marushko was going too fast and that's why he knocked the bike over. And then you don't have the replay for the Kruger, so you basically just need to do intentional strats here. But one thing to do is make sure that you don't despawn your bike, because obviously you, it's faster than the Infernus that Lance provides. So when you grab the Kruger, you want to make sure that you park the bike. Um, let me see what Marushko does actually, because there is a strat that you can do here to stay on the bike, which he may do. Yeah. So what he does there um, is basically... I forget why this works. But what he's essentially doing is like going on top of the Kruger on the bike and then you spam replays. You'll see it again later during Love Juice. I'm pretty sure he'll do it. Um, and if you spam at like the right time, like what I do is I just spam F1 with two fingers. But I think what Marushko does is spam F3 and F1 by the looks of it. Um, and basically you'll pick it up while you're still on the bike and that allows you to keep the bike. But the other strat is, I'll quickly show you like a visual reference um, if you don't want to do that. Is to pull up and you see there, just behind this pillar where this little line is, there's a door. You might be able to see it a bit better now. Just pull up your bike next to this door and that's the so it won't despawn. Because if you put it here, then Lance's Infernus will be there and it'll block you. So just put the bike here, grab like it grab the gun, initiate the cutscene, get on the bike. So again, ever so slightly slower. But if not, then can go on as normal. And then you take this garage exit because obviously you already have the close replay, so you don't need to do the slow one to the uh, to the west. You can just hop right out here. So here you notice that there's no real need to go for an ammunition skip. Uh, that's because you need um, quite a bit more sniper ammo and nades that you would ever need in no SSU. So you'll have to go to ammunition no matter what. Um, so instead of doing ammunition skip here, you just grab it as you would in ammunition as normal. So there's no reason to do the skip, it doesn't give you anything, any benefits. So the rest of this is nice and easy. Um, just grab the ammo. Because remember, you're doing a lot more missions now, so grabbing the ammo is even more important than before. You want to try and get as much as you can. And then just kill them as they spawn, as you usually would. Don't worry, I got you covered. 
I would always recommend here switching to the Uzi rather than the Tech 9 here because this thing's a fucking pea shooter. I really don't like it when people use this, but guess it's technically preference because you can switch to Uzi here, but always recommend doing do, do the Uzi here. So this is all exactly the same as No Issue. It's nice and easy. And then Gate Zip Time, exactly the same. And then um, it's after the chase that we'll we'll be seeing the next uh, route difference. I'm interested to see if uh, Rushka does the newest iteration of the chase because I'm not sure when that was a thing. This video is from December, so I don't think he does. But if he doesn't, I'll show you how to do it as well. So that new interaction of the strat is um, essentially what you want to do is you want to press F3 and then immediately hold F to bail out into the marker, but then you gain control uh, due to the close replay. Ideally what's supposed to happen there is that you're able to run up the stairs during the section where it tells you to go up the stairs and you know go and check out his house. Uh, unfortunately you can sometimes bail and miss it, uh, but it's still much faster than like slowly slowing down the Infernus and then... Um, you know, doing it the the old fashioned way. So Marushko playing smart there, he shoots to get the pedestrians away so they can't block the camera. Ah, so he does do the strap, cool. So this is the newest iteration of the chase. Um, he unfortunately messes it up there, but what is supposed to happen is that you, I'll show you how to do it. So we'll go through like step by step. So you shoot, uh, I used the Kruger for this rather than the Uzi. But you play the replay, then you jack him out the car here, and then you hold right click as you're jack as you're jacking him, so you don't get back in the car yourself. And then you shoot this guy on the ground because you don't want him to ruin everything. And then as soon as this guy pops out the car, you buff it in um, and just basically mash F. So what happens is that you hold right click, shoot him. When he's dead, then as soon as this guy pops up the car, Marush goes in a slightly bad position, and that's why this didn't work. But if you're in the perfect position to get in, then you can get in as, as he comes out. Then as he's moving here, you get out and get back in. And what basically happens is you, like, sit on top of him, and you basically delete him from existence, or you, like, overwrite him. And then he's completely gone, um, and you're just sat driving the car, and you can just drive the car straight to the destination. So it's obviously much faster than having to pull up on the wall, either of these two, um, and make sure that he's in the passenger seat. So what I'll quickly do is I'll show you a um, like a section of that that actually pulls it off, so I'll show you what it looks like. But otherwise you can just do the old strat, completely up to you. So this is my No SSU PB. Um, it works in no SSU, as you can tell as well. Like, there's no difference. Not an all missions exclusive thing. So I get the Kruger out. I play the replay. Jack him. Hold right click. Turn down. Shoot the guy. And as soon as he gets out, you see get in, get out, get in. And you basically overwrite him like that. And you can just straight up drive um, and take him to the destination. That's what's supposed to happen. So regardless of whichever way uh, you've got the BF and the guy with you, then just drive him as you would. And then the next route uh, difference is we're not going to do the zip um, down to the other side of the island just yet. We're instead going to keep this car and go back towards the second payphone mission, which is Waste the Wife. This mission is also wildly difficult to get consistent, um, but the idea is that you have to you have to kill this woman while making it look like an accident. So we can use this heavy BF to flip her car super easily. But obviously sometimes you won't flip her enough and she'll land back on her wheels. Sometimes you'll flip her so hard that she'll do a full like 360 barrel roll and land back on her wheels anyway and then she'll drive off in panic and it just becomes a real problem. But ideally what you want to do is just, you know, go ahead and flip her in one thing and just leave her. 
So you hop out here, you can take the call and play the close replay to gain control in this next section here. Allows you to get in the car. And you can also play a close replay here to gain control. Remember you'll be in Flintstone mode here. You can flip around the cutscene, but it's super inconsistent, so I wouldn't recommend it. I would instead just do what Marushka is doing and just drive alongside her, and then flip her on this road. So that's pretty much ideal. You flip her, she burns, and then you just drive away. And then you head back to the mansion for Phnom Penh. So Phnom Penh is exactly the same uh, as New SSU. You just do the close replay trick to shoot at one bullet per frame, and you just uh, get all these down. Shoot lands exactly how you usually would. Super simple. So we'll we'll skip through this. So that pop tire was pretty unfortunate, but uh what you can do here, the reason Rouge goes on the right side is because he's trying to get a car. Um, which she can then glitch uh, for the double insta pass later. So if you see a fast car like an Infernus or a Cheetah or you know a Banshee, something like that, that's on the right side of that road as you're driving along. Then be sure to glitch it for later on. Uh, make sure that you glitch the the passenger side and not the driver's side. If you're not sure how to do that, then um, all that you do is you pull alongside the car and block the driver door. And then you shoot and play the replay so he gets out the passenger side instead. That allows you to drive the glitched cars. Rather than no SSU, you just glitch the driver's side and you can't drive them. Or if you do, you get stuck. So the change that I was talking about was that you hop back in the boat here and you repark it. Um, just at the corner here. Uh, you may remember this from super old runs. This used to be a strat like years and years ago. Uh, before you used a helicopter. But because we don't have a helicopter, then obviously this is the next best thing. And then supply and demand is also exactly the same, so we'll speed this this boring part up too. So towards the end of the mission, uh, you do the same close replay strat, but instead of hopping in the heli, you hop in the boat. Uh, I would recommend here not uh, driving too far forward, because not only there's a big ass bridge in front of you that you can crash into, but also apparently there's a placebo that if you hit the loading zone, uh, towards Cortez's place, that one, um, in the cutscene, and you hit it too fast, then the bike won't spawn. I'm not sure if that's true, um, but, you know, there's plenty of placebos in this game. What Marushka seems to do is take, like, the western route instead of approaching it directly from the north. Maybe it's also the way that you approach it that can, um, like, influence whether the bike spawns or not. But if the bike does not spawn, then what you should do is just go and start the mission instead and then come back and the bike will be there uh so there's two different ways i'm honestly not sure which one is more consistent uh the first one that i mentioned works for me so give it a test see which one works for you maybe it's different for everyone i uh, know this game's weird sometimes So if you know the old old missions route you'll probably remember to make a cherry poppers replay here or if you're an ssu runner but you don't do that in the new route. Instead you just pop the PCJ against the little planter, grab the tank, finish the mission. And then this is where the, the route will see significant changes. So this is where the first Mandoop comes into play. Again, this Mandoop is completely optional and barely faster. Um, so I'll explain as we go the simple way to um, avoid the Mandoop. So you don't glitch any cars here. Um, and instead, what you do is you head past the print works towards the Tech 9 rampage. You take the, the long lance call as you go. You make the replay. And then depending on whether you do the Mandoop or not, you either go straight for the VCN helicopter or you set up the uh, Rampage. So I'll show you 
Marushko obviously does the rampage in this video, but um, I'll explain the steps to do it the safe way. Because that's what this will this will be a safe way to do all missions still relatively fast. Because otherwise we're going to be dead, Lance. We're in too far now. But thanks for the call. Speak to you later. So if you're not doing the Mandu, what you would do is um, you would go to the fire truck spawn here. Technically, the uh, cop car is faster. But um, just down this road, there's a fire truck. And what you want to do is, I'll show you on a video real quick. So what you would do is you would go ahead and head straight down this road. And there's a cop car spawn right here. Technically, this is the fastest way to set it up. Um, if you RNG a taxi on this road, you can use that too. But that's obviously inconsistent. And the reason why I don't go for the cop car is because it's also sometimes locked. I don't know what the chances are. And then also you get a shotgun in your inventory, which like fucks up my inventory management. So what I would recommend is if you're trying to do the consistent route, is to instead just go through here. And this fire trick that spawned is always unlocked. And it doesn't give you any, you know, stupid uh, weapons that I'll mess you up. So you hop in the fire truck, then you do exactly what you would do to start um, the On Mission Zero Rampage via the ambulance right at the start of the game if you did the Molotov start. So that's you hold submission down, then you press F3 to start the Tech 9 Rampage, then you just hop out nice and easy. So instead, if you're going for the Mandu, uh, you cut right through the grass and as I said, just head right towards the VCN heli building. Um, if you're doing this route, then you take this phone call here, which is Kent Paul for Death Row. Um, if you're doing the, the other route, the safe route, uh, you what you should do is not take the call here and just take it once you get to the Malibu instead. Slightly more efficient for that route. So that's the man dupe there. Um, essentially, it's as simple as running into the marker and then timing the um, timing the start of the mission. So as you also start the rampage, and then make sure to save a Malibu replay, no matter which um, no matter which method you do. Makes sense to, to make the replay while you're taking the call at the Malibu if you're doing the uh, the other strat. But then, um, the way you keep this call is slightly different depending on if you do the Mandoop or not, because of the Rampage timer. So I'll show you both ways. Um, I'll let this video play out, and then I'll show you a Twitch vod of me doing the safer way yesterday. So if you're doing the Mandoop, uh, you kill everyone with the Tech 9 here. Uh, fly in as normal as you would in no SSU. Uh, rinse everyone with the Tech 9. And then all that you do in order to get the call is you uh, just buffer an input um, once you land in the hospital marker. So you land in the marker and then immediately hold F and you'll buffer an F input. So then when the rampage runs out, you'll have the call. And then the mission ends, so the call is then on mission zero. You then hold the call, and you fly off. Now I'll quickly show you a video as to how to do it if you're not man duping. So if you're not man duping, you pull up here. Um, you should have a much lower time on the the rampage timer, as you can see. I'm about about 50 seconds. But then you make the replay while you're taking the call as normal. And then if I just skip forward a bit here. Kill everyone with the regular weapons, but what you should do, uh, let me go to here. You see, the rampage timer should run out, like, as you're pulling into the compound. And the phone will ring as soon as you get out of the helicopter. What you should do is cancel that call as you're running back. Um, so then you kill these guys with the Uzi. And then what will happen was is the phone will ring during the um, this little confrontation with Lance. And it'll simply skip a dialogue line. So that's like another minor optimization. Don't worry if you forget about it. But the point is that you just need to keep the call. Um, like you need to keep an eye on the call timer. To make sure that it comes through. So then you'll have your phone ringing here. 
And then you just need to hold it before you get to the helicopter. And then again, make sure that you hold it with a key that you can comfortably hold. Because once you've committed to holding it, you can't break that. And then you hold the call all the way to dropping Lance off. And hold it all the way through the end of the mission into the next one. So now let's go back to Marushko. Also, as a note, while we're flying back, uh, remember to re-enter the helicopter. You do that exactly the same as you would in no SSU, uh, whichever one you're doing. Obviously, if you buffer the exit input, then you're going to re-enter anyway. But if you're doing the safe route, then remember to re-enter while you're holding the call. And you need to hold it all the way until we're about to do just now. So now, instead of doing the slide, what you do is you go in here, then you let go of the call, and then this will dupe the mission. So you just skip through, and you'll see you'll start the mission, and you'll see the Diaz cutscene again. There it is. That's how you know you did the mission properly. Don't worry, Tommy. I'll cover you. And then there'll be two sets of other guys, so just be careful. Keep that in mind. But you can still chainsaw these guys and run, sprint through. Just be careful that you know you might take a bit more damage. Uh, and then make sure not to chainsaw these guys, but instead run into the main room and uh, M60 to two Diaz's. Otherwise, if you don't, there's a chance that this uh, dupe can fail uh, sometimes. So just make sure that you make sure that you M60 them instead. And now we're 100k richer, and that will allow us to continue on with the route. So shakedown is pretty similar. The changes are that you don't need to keep the VCN heli at all. So you can just have like hard crash land it into the mall. It doesn't matter. You can just nuke the heli if you want to, since you don't need it anymore. So here, make sure to uh, buy a sniper rifle and grenades, as well as armor if you need it. Um, just remember, we're not doing ammunition skip. Two nades over, M4 the other ones as usual. But then you don't need to hop in the shakedown, um, the model and furnace. What you can do is just straight up buy warp uh, back to the Malibu as soon as the mission completes. Nice and easy. Now it's time for one of the other kind of bullshit missions. Uh, no escape is pretty inconsistent. You gotta deal with uh, four star police. And there's no real way that you can manipulate it by um, by glitching cars or anything. Uh, one thing I remember asking Marushko forever ago is uh, why he does what he does here. So this is actually really smart by him. So here usually if you start this mission um, what you need to do is go, and go to the PCJ Playground uh, bike, and you'll use that for this next portion, right? So from here, you can grab a car and drive to it. It's faster than running. Uh, but since there was a cop here, if Marushko was saw by the cops still in the car, he'd get one star. And if you go into the police station on this mission with a, a wanted level, you'll get instantly shot at and just destroyed. So make sure that you don't get a wanted level doing this car. So that's why Marushko decides to go for the car and then turn around and keep running. It's a really smart play by him. But so if you get a car and not a police officer, then drive it down here, down the screen, uh, as you would with the taxi and no SSU during Spilling the Beans. Otherwise, just run. It's not that slow. Then Marushko, the, the fastest place to park the bike is here. Um, if you want a slightly safer way, because as you, as you leave the police station here, there's going to be cops swarming. So a slightly safer place is I park my bike just around this corner, like here. So then I can sprint away with Cam, get away from the insane amount of cops, and get on so they don't pop my tires or anything. Uh, this is faster, but it's more risky. Completely up to you. So don't go for the cop uniform, it's a waste of time. Uh, just run through here. It's kind of kept, uh, difficult to get the movement down, but that's just been practice uh, Because you can get stuck on the you know the tables and whatever else But yeah, just run all the way through grab the key card run out again before you get shot too much. Hopefully Free cam and then cams AI works exactly the same uh, as Lance does So hold sprint to make sure that he's sprinting after you and take a really specific route you see Marushko runs like a very wide angle to make sure that Cam doesn't get stuck on any walls. 
and then continue holding sprint, get on the bike, and get out of there before you get gunned down. That's as simple as it sounds, but it's much harder. So now you want to make a replay over this little property here. Uh, the reason Marushko turns around is so he can like simply hop off the bike and hop back on again while he's making the replay. He also shoots that uh, enforcer. If you shoot a car like that, it works similar to glitching a car. They'll, they'll stop and get out if you shoot them. So if uh, enforcers or cheaters or anything like that by the FBI are giving you trouble, uh, you can shoot them just like Marushko does there. Otherwise, it's straight to the pain spray, and again, just hope that you don't get murdered. That's the that's the strat here. Keep your eyes peeled for any spike strips, and just get to the pain spray as quick as you can. Nice little enforcer on its roof there. Classic NA cops. And then finish this mission as normal. After you finish this mission, this is a good opportunity to try and get another glitch car for a double insta pass. If you didn't get one during the fastest boat. Because you're going to be driving from here to the police cheater along this main road again. So see if you can get one. Again, go for something fast. An Infernus like that is perfect. Is that an Infernus? Yeah. Something like that is perfect. Banshee, Stinger, whatever. So Marushka actually kind of goofs this, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, never mind. Uh, it must have been a different VOD I was thinking of. Actually, no, it was me that fucked it up. Never mind. I fucked it up in my last run. Uh, but yeah, so if you can get a glitch like that, it's perfect. If not, run to the cheater and immediately buy what back to the apartment. Now you can set up um, an on mission zero call. The, the buy icon for this is, is exactly the same as the save icon, as you can see. So you don't need to make another replay to set up a save icon replay. And then all you do here is hold submission, uh, press F3 to teleport, and as you warp, then you let go of submission. So you hold down submission, teleport, and as you teleport here, then you let go of uh, submission. That will give you on mission zero vigilante. As you can see, this is vigilante, but you're, you can have the mission icons. And then you hold down vigilante. Uh, anywhere on this drive, as long as you don't get a wanted level. is going to steal this PCJ. And then what you do is, is say you hold down uh, Vigilante. You do this any point in the drive. And then you let go of um, Vigilante as the phone rings. And that will give you an Omission Zero call. Then you hold that call. And you can either go into the mission marker directly, or if you get a PCJ, take one. Because using a PCJ for this segment saves about 30 seconds or so with good driving. If you get one from anywhere here all the way up to the shooters, take it. Now let go of the call as you go into the marker, and then it'll soft lock here in a second. It's totally fine. Here it'll soft lock when you go into the cutscene. Hop on the bike to cancel the call, and now you're on missions. On mission zero four iron. If you don't have a PCJ here, just keep the cheater all the way until the shooters. So you need to carry this call through um, this next mission. So you want to make sure that your phone's ringing when you complete this mission. Uh, this snipe isn't super difficult. So make sure your phone is ringing before you do it. And then in regards to the snipe, uh, Marushko is still holding the call here, which is bad. You shouldn't do that. Uh, so he's going to lose a lot of time here. But ideally what you what you want to do is not crash. And instead, just pull into the marker, get out, your phone will ring, and then snipe him with the phone ringing. And then you can hold the call again. So don't do what Marushko is doing here. Do, what I, do as I say. Not as I do, quote unquote. As he does. So now he has to wait for the call, but the point is the phone's ringing, then you go ahead and shoot him. Now you have the on mission zero call, hold it, hop on the bike, or the cheater. And now we're going to go and dupe the shootist. Rusko is driving like an absolute maniac in this run, Jesus. So hop off, take the call, uh, reposition the bike if you have it, if not just, you know... Uh, push the cheater as well. Just make sure that you start this mission with the phone call running. 
then make a save replay, and then start the mission again. I agree. Random civilian. So now this shooter's dupe is for demolition man in pass. This isn't that complicated, uh, but you need to make sure that you do these steps in uh, a certain timing window. So very much pay attention here. So you drive all the way up to the shooting range and you beat the mission as normal, but then you're still going to have an instance left over and you're going to use that to insta pass demolition man. So, I'm going to speed up this section until the end of the mission, because this mission is super simple. Literally, all you do is shoot targets. Um, there's nothing to it. But then once the mission is uh, completed, I'll come back to you. So once you complete the mission, you'll see another marker, step into it, and you'll restart uh, the first section of the mission, here, skip the cutscene, and then here you can hold uh, shift or sprint, whatever your sprint key is, and then you can hold space or whatever your jump key is to cancel this, super easy. And now you want to shoot Phil and that guy. Uh, Marusco shoots him several times. I don't know if it makes a difference. But what you can do is you can shoot them once, one bullet each. And that will give you a wanted level. This wanted level is super important. Make sure you have it. Because what you want to do is you want to not have your phone ring here. Because if your phone rings and you death warp, which is what we're going to do, you'll go on mission one and you'll fail this instance. But you need to keep it running. Okay? So you shoot. You see Marushko gets the wanted level, so his phone isn't going to ring. He'll stay on mission zero. Because if you guys don't know, if you're on mission zero and you death warp, the mission instance that you're on still continues running. Now he's going to grenade himself, because you need to death warp here, as I mentioned. So you grenade yourself down to a certain amount of health. Uh, that health is anywhere from like 1 to 160 here. Because you want to either grenade yourself like once or twice to kill yourself in between round two, which is this, and round three over here, okay? So 107 health is fine. Um, the, the explosions do 83 damage, so keep that in mind. So if your health is less than 83, you can just throw one grenade uh, here. Otherwise, Marush goes on 107 uh, with the first grenade, so he'll need to throw two. So again, you hold shift here, or sprint, and then hold jump to cancel it. And then Marush goes through two grenades, kills himself, and he's on mission zero, so the shootest instance is still running. Now you grab the ambulance. If this is locked, just grab some random shit off the street. It doesn't really make a difference. And again, try and look for a PCJ. Grab weapons. Here you want to buy one revolver. One, two, three, four. One, two. You can buy three here. And then one, two, three. You can buy four here if you want to. Money isn't super tight, uh, but you don't need that much ammo. So, you can, if you want to be safe, you can do one revolver, four SMG, um, three M4, and four sniper. Or if you want to be fast, then uh, most people do one revolver, four SMG, two M4, three sniper. So Marushka gets super lucky here and gets another like super epic PCJ. So again, if you see one, grab one. If not, just stick to the ambulance. It's totally fine. And then use that handy dandy save warp that you got. As soon as you get into the vice point area, which is just over this next bridge. Then you can save warp back to the Malibu. There you go. And now if you have the PCJ, you can do uh, the jump over here. The unique stunt jump. And then if you pull off to the side, you'll skip the slow motion that's here if you hit the jump normally. You see Marushko pulls off to the side. Uh, that's the faster way to get the Demolition Man. 
if you don't have a PCJ, then you just go to the PCJ playground one here, cross the bridge, go around, or cut through. I think cutting through is faster. And then straight to Avery's mission. Now, you're not out of the woods yet until the demolition man is to pass, so keep this in mind. So Marushka's gonna kill, kill a couple of people to not get the wanted level here. Very minor optimization, doesn't really matter. Now, this cutscene, you have to skip at a really specific moment. Now keep this in mind. If you want to play super safe, don't skip the cutscene. You can just watch the cutscene and you'll still uh, insta pass the mission. If you skip too early, you're fucked. So I'll show you the timing, but keep in mind that late is better than early. So the timing is like a second after it starts, after the cutscene. So bam, skip, and that's done. As you can see, that you'll you'll have uh, you have control. If you wait too long and you don't have control, then just watch the cutscene play out. That's totally fine. Uh, you can see like the dialogue lines go across. It only loses like 30 seconds or something, but at least the, the insta pass still goes through. That's what's important. So now there's another ins uh, instance of uh, Demolition Man running, and you also want another the On Mission Zero call. So the phone is ringing, you use your sniper rifle, and you line up. Uh, the van is here for Demolition Man, because of the second instance. You want to blow it up to fail that instance. Uh, otherwise your game will crash when you start barb roll. So what you do is you line the sniper up with like the middle of this fence and line this section up with this little white tile here. And then bang like the lower mid part of this fence, you'll see it blow up. Hold the call and then get back onto the PCJ. If you lose the call at any point uh, during during this section, then you can set it up like outside of a mission at any point with the save marker, like we did before the start of Far Iron. It's not a huge deal. So now I'll take the call, hop into the mansion, start barb roll while the phone call is ringing. Oh, sorry, while the phone call is taking place. And then it'll be on mission zero barb roll. If you remember the old route, um, the auto side man dupe is skipped here. This is what this whole um, call going through is. So you not only get to Inspass Demolition Man, which is nice, but you also uh, skip the auto side man dupe, which is also quite good. So really important here that you want to go ahead and run these guys over. Uh, that's very deliberate. If you drive by them, like in no SSU, you'll get a wanted level. If you run them over, you don't. Very important because we want the call here. So you cancel the call and then walk into the marker. This will give you control in this cutscene, which just allows you to go ahead and get on the bike, which is quite cool. <clears throat> and then here you need to drive and then wait for the call to come in because we need it to ring at the end of this mission. So you can pop the PCJ and then wait for the call to come in. Very important because as soon as you blow this car up, you'll get a wanted level. So blow that car up with the sniper rifle. And then um, this guy will be laying on the floor because he gets knocked over. You can choose to wall bang him here, but I found it to be quite inconsistent. There's no real lineup that anybody knows. So another thing you can do is just like run down the street I'll uh, go back so I can show you here. Just run down the street like here and just shoot him with the M4 instead. Make sure that your phone's ringing. Crouch so you don't move in the cutscene. Now hold the call. Get on your bike and drive by these guys. So now you'll have another on mission zero call. That you can now use for auto side. So you don't have to let go of this call. You can hold it all the way through. Again, make sure to pick, uh, make sure to park your bike on the other side of the road across the yellow marker. So you can hold the call all the way through this, and then you can let go once you get onto the bike. Park up here, and this is just going to be banging these guys out with the sniper rifle. Bang him through the floor, or whatever. It's not a floor. Whatever he stood on, you can see his feet. It's not too hard. <clears throat> but the PSG is a is a lifesaver here.
bang this guy. You don't have to worry about the phone for now. I'll cut through to the west. Bang these two guys in the bobcat. One, two. As soon as these guys are dead, uh, you can warp back to the Malibu. Save warp. And then head south. And this is one of the cooler wall bangs that you can do in the game, similar to CCC Snipe. Uh, if you have two or one star wanted level, then you should uh, make sure to basically get rid of the stars because you're going to need your phone to ring pretty soon. So the way you do that is heading into this alley and grabbing this wanted bribe here. As soon as you grab the wanted bribe, you go through and cut to the right here. And then in this little alleyway, you can wallbang the guy on the boat all the way from here. So what you do is you can wait for your wanted level to go away because I say you need the call. If you have two stars. If you just have one star, then obviously you can just bribe it away and you're good. But what you do is you line up here with the pole, stand next to it, line up. Um, so again, this top reticle is on this corner, aim towards the middle of the wall, like in between these two sections, and just bang. Put about 10 shots to your heart's content, bam. And you should uh, destroy the boat. And now this is just a matter of holding the call and uh, taking out the last guy. So drive by him while keeping the, uh, the call held. Now you have another on mission zero call. And then jump off and answer the call into the marker. Now we can use this auto scroller, which is all hands on deck, to answer all the calls that we have in our queue, which I believe is four. So this section is an auto scroller, but there's a certain amount of like requisites that you have to hit in order to hit like each checkpoint inside of it. So the first one is that you kill the drivers of these boats. What Marushko does is he just guns them all down, um, like as they get on. But if if you like miss any of them or anything like that, just make sure that you kill the drivers for these boats. Hello, Sonny. And then take Sonny's call. That'll take you to the, to the next checkpoint. You didn't give me a lot of support down here, Sonny. Oh, my fault, is it? Well, I've heard you've been busy, all right. Busy killing drug barons. Busy taking over. Don't forget about us, Tommy. Because I can assure you, I ain't forgotten about you. Then you can use a sniper rifle here to kill the two, um... Or the three dinghy guys. And then blowing up this boat, even though it might seem like, you know, they're not coming after you or anything. Blowing up this boat is necessary to pass the mission because otherwise it will say that the uh, the road is blocked and you need to destroy the blockade. So you only need to destroy this boat. You don't need to destroy the other four. So kill the dinghy guys, then destroy the boat, and then kill the driver of this boat. And this one. And then any extra guys that come up. Because now you're just waiting for the helicopters to spawn. Take the call. And now these sailors, uh, half of them on each side will drop ammo for the M4, which you should grab. So you can just punch them down or use the katana, it's up to you. Make sure that you don't shoot them though. For some reason they only drop ammo when you either use explosives or melee, I believe. So just do what Merge Go does here and just, uh, just punch them to death. Grab their ammo, and then grab the ammo pick up in the middle of the boat as well. It's free ammo. And you need to bang these helicopters out while the phone call is going on. Super easy. 
They usually drop off people, but you can kill them before, you know, before you even think about it. Those replays are just fucking around, I don't believe they save any time. And then the hunter spawns, so you just need to snipe the driver. Dead, and that's it. Mission complete. Take the last call. Mission complete. So you want to make sure that you have all of those calls uh, answered during this mission. You'll know if you do it because the last one is always Mr. Black calling you, telling you to get to the payphone. That's the, always the one that, that's bottom in the queue. Then once you pass the mission, go slightly southeast so you can uh, buy warp again. Sorry, uh, save warp. Then hop out, you'll immediately go into the Malibu and start the driver. The driver is exactly the same. Um, you grab the PCJ playground PCJ. Not sure what Marushko is doing there, checking the stats or some shit. Uh, but yeah, you just grab the PCJ playground PCJ and then just destroy him in the race, nice and easy. So a little minor thing you can do here is once you complete the mission, you can hold F to buffer uh, exit input. And then that allows you to just go ahead and hop back on the bike because you need to re-enter this bike. Uh, and then you do the jump again across, slow-mo skip. But yeah, you need to re-enter this bike because you want to use it for the next mission, 2-bit hit. Uh, and if you don't, it'll class as a mission vehicle and it'll despawn, similar to a lot of things we've done so far. But otherwise, just start 2-bit hit. So, on this mission, you want to make sure that you grab uh, a set of grenades which are in the basketball court. They're just on the left here before you get to the clothes. Hop in, they're in the middle. Those will come in handy a bit later. And then grab the clothes. And then this is uh, quite similar to old route. You need to uh, make a replay over the Tech 9 rampage, which you should already be familiar with. Just cuts through here. Make the replay. Back on. And then head towards the actual mission objective. And now here you want to do... Um, you'll be familiar with this in the old route. But if you haven't done all missions before, then I'll uh, run you through how exactly you do this. So you kill this guy. Make sure that you're spotted to not fail the mission. And then you go over here. So... What you want to do is you want to buy warp, but you want to keep your um, your F3 replay. So you can use F1 in order to buy warp, uh, as long as the actual replay is set up in the last like 30 seconds or whatever. It's it's a variable, but just know it's around 30. Anyway, so what you do is you come up to the buy icon, you get off your bike, then you just press F3, okay? And then... That will make it so your F1 replay starts from the buy icon. Then you drive, and you need to be relatively quick here. You need to drive and complete the mission. So the way you do that is just escaping the area. To the people who are on the old route, you used to dive off the bike here and, tell, and buy warp by yourself. Don't do that anymore. Buy warp with the bike. So we'll go through it. So the inputs are... Hop on. Uh, sorry, hop off. F3. Hop on. Drive. Pull into here, turn right so you drive past the wall. And then as you pass the mission, you want to press F1 and then tab immediately so you buy the asset inside the F1 replay and then F1 again to cancel the replay. And you will buy warp without losing your F3 replay for the Tech 9. Now skip the cutscene. Now make sure you re enter the bike so it doesn't despawn. Grab this taxi, very important, don't take this one. Rampage start, so hold taxi and uh, rampage start, then let go of taxi uh, in order to get on mission zero tech nine rampage. Back up, start VIP, 
with inside this taxi by just driving into the marker. Then hopping out, make the sieve replay, get back in the same taxi and drive off to continue the mission. That will allow you to keep your PCJ there later. Quite important. Because PCJ is obviously a really fast vehicle, so whenever we can use it, we want to. Now you just drive and complete uh, the mission. If, you, if you're if used to the old route, this is all exactly the same. So pull a 180 here, sound the horn to get this guy to come out. This is my fare. Back off, asshole. Now there's a maneuver here you can do to make this uh, kind of consistent so the VIP doesn't die. What you do is you shoot the car enough so that he'll slow down and then you pull in front as you can see here then you reverse so that makes this guy drive forward after you so your car is right in front of the VIP and not his. So that will make the VIP get into your car nice and safe without potentially getting run over by the other rival taxi. That makes this uh, much more consistent. I see a lot of people just winging it and then complaining that you get unlucky when uh, the VIP dies because he gets run over by the other guy. Can still happen, but it's much more rare if you do it this way. So now you grab the police cheater. And you cut through all to all the way to the airport. Then here, if you're fast, um, you'll have plenty of time on the rampage timer. As you can see, Marushka has got like over 10 seconds when he pulls up. Um, so you'll have to wait a little bit. And then you want to hop in. And then as the rampage expires, you see you'll get the get the um, the call. So what you want to do is you want to pull into the marker, then get out of the car as you hit the trigger, um, and then you'll have the call. If you're running out of time so that the rampage is like already finishing as you're pulling up, then you can simply pull up, but not actually inside the marker. It's so like pull up next to the marker, then hop out of the car and run into the marker with the VIP. Then the phone will be ringing, and then you can hold it the same way you do here. So you hold the call. Hop in here, make sure that you park your cheetah either on this piece of the pavement or on the other bit over here. Because if you leave it where it is, it'll despawn. Then hold the call all the way through, check out the check-in. We want to take two more calls here. So you can let go of it during that cutscene, or you can wait until you grab the gun. It's completely up to you. What I usually do is I hold it all the way until I grab the sniper rifle, then I glitch it with the sniper rifle. But you can let go of it in the fade and it has the same thing, uh, the same effect for a hands-free call. Now what you want to do is you only need one sniper bullet here, but you have ten. Uh, so you want to get rid of the other nine. So Marushka does quite a smart thing, where you run into this corner because you don't want to get a wanted level. And you just shoot away the other shots, so you just have one left. Like that. And then that won't give you a wanted level. And then this is all done, so um, when you head back through the scanners, you'll get 40, your 40-round 40 sniper rifle back, rather than getting um, the one-bullet sniper rifle that'll overwrite. Oh, sorry, the nine-bullet sniper rifle. So make sure to empty the clip aside from one shot. And I'll do this mission as normal. Bear in mind that a lot of the, the UI elements don't show up because you have the shooter stoop left over. So for example, the scaro meter on this mission doesn't exist, but it's still there. You'll still fail the mission if you get too close, so keep that in mind. It's the same for publicity tour and a bunch of other things. So shoot your last bullet at this guy once the marker disappears. Bam. After taking the call. Grab this, and then when you leave, because you emptied your magazine, you're going to brand new 40 round sniper there, you see. So you see you get 40 bullets again. Fully loaded sniper rifle. And we'll be using that, so it's important that you do that strategy. Hop in the cheetah, and then this is where the PCJ will come in from earlier. Because we'll save warp back to Kaufman. And then hop on the PCJ and use that for this next section. So hop through here, turn right. As you get in here, save warp. Get out, get on the PCJ, and then finish the mission.
as soon as that mission is done, go ahead and start Love Juice. Keep your PCJ. Pull 180 sound the horn. Looking for something special. I got what you need. Thanks for the money, sucker. This drug dealer will mug you off, so now we're gonna mug him off. Just drive by him. And then you can do the uh, the fast replay inputs here. Uh Marushka doesn't do it for some reason, not entirely sure why. But uh, what you can do here is you can pull over the briefcase like Marushko did for the Kruger. You can just stop and uh, either mash F1 or mash F1 on F3 to pick up the briefcase without getting off the bike. If not, just get off the bike and get back on like he does. So on the way here, um, pull off. Head towards the film studios and make a replay over the film studio marker. If you forget it on the way here, you can just do it on the way back. You take the exact same route. Hey Mercedes. Hiya, Tommy. And how are you? So, pull up to Mercedes. Uh, Marushko faces the opposite way than what is logical. Uh, because he's going to go ahead and go down here and then pull back for a nice little jump. That you can do to get all the way out of this section without driving back on the ramp. And then head back, uh, make the replay on the way back if you haven't already. If not, just head back and finish the mission. Next up is Psycho Killer. It's one of the shortest missions in the game. Just make sure to pre-select your M4 before you go in. And then head to the marker. Hold F once you stop to buffer an input to get out of the car in the cutscene. And as soon as the cutscene's done, just gun down. So make sure you can blow up the car to make it quicker. And also make sure that you, um, for the same reason with the whole like uh, mission vehicle despawning stuff, make sure that even if you like pass the mission, um, like for example, it's hard to explain. So you see Marushko here, uh, he gets the kill. You can tell because the door opens so the corpse is gonna fly out. Make sure that you don't get in the car like as this is happening. Because if you do, then you'll be in the vehicle when the mission passes. And then that mission, this vehicle will be marked for cleanup. But you don't want to do that. You want to keep this Love Fist uh, limo around. Because we'll be using it in a couple of missions time. So make sure that you pass the mission before you get in the Love Fist limo. So you see, even though Marushko has already passed the mission technically. He blows up the car to pass the mission. And then he gets in the Love Fist limo. Very important. Park the Lithus limo around here, run towards the Uzi, which is just around the corner, take the call in the meantime, and you want to swap this MP5 to this Uzi here. And I'll just head towards Aloe Wheels of Steel start. can try and glitch a car here if you get one, but good chance you won't. So don't be too upset if you don't get one. Now on this mission, you want to make sure that you steal one of their bikes, because their bikes are like, upgraded, they have better handling, and I believe acceleration as well. So they're called God Bikes, and uh, you can just steal one of theirs, which makes this uh, race much quicker. Because these bikes handle fantastically, and they're super quick. So, once that's done, you can just bail off as soon as you hit the last marker. And now, messing with the man is like, a fairly complicated mission. Excuse me, even though you seem to breeze through it pretty quick. But let me explain how it works first. 
So you have to fill up a chaos meter. The chaos meter doesn't exist in this route because again, the, uh, the text element. But usually you have to fill up a certain chaos meter. The way you raise chaos is by basically, uh, well, causing mayhem, like things that would get the police after you. So the quickest way to beat this mission is to not do a lot of damage to things, but throw a lot of bullets at things, if that makes sense. So you want a high fire rate, low damage weapon, such as the Uzi. That's why we grabbed the Uzi deliberately. And all that you want to do is just shoot cars as much as possible. So if you get a lucky car here, that's totally fine. Um, but if not, what you want to do is you want to shoot the bikes, the god bike that you left from the last race. These two angels, make sure you shoot those, but make sure they, if they're on fire, then like shoot the next one so they don't blow up next to each other. Because the armor is good, is it? So he sets the other one on fire. Or he, I guess because he got the glitch car, you don't have to do that. But if you don't have the glitch car, you should make sure to set this one on fire. Then set that one on fire as this one is burning. Otherwise, you want to get like half damage towards it. And then use this Lufus limo, which you conveniently parked before, to get the last bit of damage by blowing it up. And then that's like the consistent messing with the man. If you don't, if you mess up and you don't have enough vehicles and you're not getting anything on, anything on the road, uh, this part here is a car park. Uh, there's also a PCJ directly opposite, uh, which I'll show you, which you can shoot for more damage. Uh, but if not, then there's a car park right here with a bunch of fixed spawns in it you can go and shoot as well. So this is a big reason why I told you to get ammo in Guardian Angels for this mission. Uh, but yeah, so there's a PCJ here which you can also shoot. It's up to you. But for Hogtide, you just go ahead and go up this ramp. But again, you can do a slow-mo skip if you jump off to the side. Like pull off to the left like that. And you hop down, bait these guys out by running right. You can slash them with the katana if you want. Uh, that was quite a risky thing that Mariko did. But what most people do is you can either like slash both the guys, or you can just run like here to bait them out, and then just sprint and get onto the bike. And then they'll like run back and forwards, and you can hop on the bike nice and easy. Then you just hop out via the stairs. And then just drive back. As a minor thing, but you should definitely do this, is the how long the cutscene takes to complete. It's based on where you park the bike. So if you make sure to do what Marushka does and you pull to like the very left side of the marker, then this guy will run and take the bike immediately. It's quicker. If you park like here, you'll have to slowly walk over and then the guy will come and take the bike. So now shoot through, grab the PCJ again, and then drive to the Love Fist icon, which is publicity tour. This mission is super simple and it's an auto-scroller, uh, so I'll speed it up as well. All that you need to know is that um, essentially the way the mission works is you have to um, keep the keep the the love fist limo moving, and if you slow down too much, it'll blow up. But it's a super easy way to deal with it. So you can do that uh, no thingy slide, no weapon slide again like Marushka did. But if not, you can just park the vehicle where he did and glitch the call. It's completely up to you. But yeah, so the way you complete this mission, like, super easily, there's two different ways. One is to just drive um, and do, like, basically intentional strats, but just not, you know, not, not fuck up and blow up. And the other way to do it is to play replays for each voice line, because then, obviously, the game isn't running because you're in a replay, uh, but all the dialogue is still playing out, so it's like you can't fail it. It's completely up to you. So if you want to do the super easy strats, you can just drive here, and then you just play, press F1 for every single voice line that plays. So like this whole bit plays, you're in a replay, then you cancel F1, press it again, and then go in. But what most people do is they just drive in a square, like this, and just keep driving around. It's super simple. 
But yeah, just keep, make sure that the, the car is going fast. Make sure that you don't slow down or stop. Because then you'll fail. And once the bomb's been defused, then you can just pull up here so you're ready in the marker as soon as the dialogue finish. Now. And then you just immediately hit the marker to start this long and skippable cutscene. So once this mission is done, hop on the bike and immediately buy Warp to Film Studios. Film Studios isn't super different uh, if you know the old route, but I'll, I'll point out the differences as we go, obviously. And uh, for those who haven't done the old route, then I'll uh, explain it as we go. So you pull through the section where you did the drug deal in Love Juice. Be careful on these bumps, they will spin you out and make you fall off or whatever, so take them slow. And then you can just bail off here. Your bike is always reset in the same position. You'll see it here in a second. Yo, candy. See your bike is there. So you can just bail off and throw the bike. You don't have to stop and park it or anything. Because it'll always reset in this position. Looking for movie talent. You interested? Sure. But you'd have to talk to my agent. The hell are you doing? You should have stayed at home today. Can you believe this? Asshole? So once this cutscene finishes, you want to run forward a bit to get yourself some distance and then snipe that guy with the M4. That's kind of tricky. And you want to wait in front of Candy for the marker. And then these guys will un aggro as soon as you step in the marker and finish the dialogue with Candy. You pick her up. Then you go and see Mercedes. Those snipes aren't super difficult, but if you fuck it up, then you can just chase them on the bike. Not a big deal. If you don't have 100 health yet, there's a minor optimization you can do um, where you jump from that trigger zone where the dialogue happens into the place where you buy food, and that's why it only works if you don't have 100 HP. And that will give you control in the cutscene, which allows you to like get the ladies to the sentinel while the dialogue is going on. But as I say, that only works if you're on low health, so it's quite rare that you'll get the chance to do that. But it's worth mentioning just on the odd time, it's super easy to do, and it saves a bit of time. If you bail out at a specific time, there like Marushko did, then your bike will respawn at the film studios for some reason. Uh, again, that's a really minor optimization because it allows you to drive to the docks in a second. But if you don't get that bailout or you just don't go for it, like I don't bother, uh, then you can just run here instead of taking the PCJ. It's a really short drive, you literally just turn this corner and that's it. So yeah, it saves like a second or two max. But this mission is super simple, you just drive through the checkpoints. Um, taking off is kind of awkward, just make sure that you pull down and hold W. Um, just to make sure that you get enough momentum to get off the ground, but once you're off it's super simple.
Fortunate you know, with a super easy mission, you can just dive bomb this thing. Because as soon as you press F, you'll just immediately stop. No, you know, momentum isn't a thing here. And you start Martha's Mugshot. This is another quite uh, long auto scroller section, the first half of this mission. This is why Film Studio sucks, in my opinion. But you want to grab this sparrow, and instead of waiting for candy, you want to immediately go to the Vores to VCN Heli. If you're quick, you have just enough time to swap to the VCN Heli and drive back before you fail the mission for going out of range. So to park your sparrow next to it, make sure obviously you don't block the helicopter that you're getting into. And then fly back into the radius before you fail. Now here you're literally just following the limo um, to near the Malibu club. There's not exactly much you can do to speed it up, so instead you can just grab uh, some armor which is on the rooftop here, if you need to heal up. And otherwise you just have to follow and make sure you stay in a certain proximity so you, uh, so you don't fail. Once Candy's Limitless gets close, you can hop onto the roof of the hotel opposite, like Mushko did. This is a super easy way to beat this mission, it's also very fast. You just park on the roof opposite, and you take the pictures, you don't have to zoom or any, or any of that bullshit. Or go to the building that the game tells you to. You can just take pictures from where the helicopter is, and then just hop in the heli and fly away. And you skip uh, having to deal with all the FBI. Marushko uses replays, replays there to cancel and be able to like fast fire the camera. Be very careful if you're doing that, because if you fuck up the timing, uh, then you'll get stuck in like perma slow-mo or some shit, I think it is. So if you're not confident with how that works, then don't do it, just click normally. And then fly back here. Make sure you stick to the western side of the film studios, because the eastern one has uh, like roadblocks that will shoot you a lot. Because you want to ideally keep this helicopter down on the ground, uh, not crash landed and in good health because we want to use it later. It's not a big deal if you don't, but it is slightly slower. But I'll go through both the backup and the proper strat. So if you can, keep that helicopter, land it nicely like Marushko does and keep it in good health. So now G-Spotlight is another super easy mission. Uh, you go up to a marker, then you trigger um, a cutscene, go up in a lift, you do one jump with the bike, like a stunt jump, and you're supposed to do the rest of them on the bike, but you can just grab the VCN heli and fly into the checkpoints instead. It's super easy and super linear. Uh, so again, I'm just going to speed this up because otherwise we're going to be sat here for, you know, forever watching you grab checkpoints. But thankfully we're almost out of the, uh, the boring section of this run, thankfully. So once you pull out of this elevator, this is where you um, do the first jump, first and only jump with the bike. Get in this marker. Then you go through the glass, do this epic cool looking jump from fucking Fast and Furious or some shit. And instead of pulling left to the next marker, pull right. Fly all the way off the building. Uh, you can bail off if you don't want to try and land it. That's pretty risky what Marushko did there. Then hop into VCN and then just start flying through the markers. Super simple. If you still have your other heli sitting uh, nice and pretty, you can just uh, crash land this helicopter once you hit the last marker or bail out of it or whatever you want to do. Because you won't need it. If you don't have the helicopter from Martha's Mugshot, you want to make sure you land this one nicely, because you will need it. 
Then as you hit the um, the final marker here, you'll have a cutscene with the spotlight, and then you'll have a second one where it tells you that you've completed the asset. Now, for some reason, uh, you have full control of Tommy during this like asset cutscene. But what they did was they put you in like a like one of the film studio huts to make it sure you wouldn't run around, but you can just run out of it. So what you do is, as you can see, Marushka is running to the helicopter now. So if you have your helicopter in this cutscene, as soon as you spawn in, you want to hold W and A and start sprinting towards your helicopter. So W and A now, and then tap sprint to get to your helicopter and hop into it during the cutscene. Then once you finish the mission, you'll have the helicopter and then you can immediately take off and go towards Copland. If you don't have that heli, then it's not a big deal. Just get in the one that you used for the mission. It's slightly slower, but again, barely so. Next up in Copland, uh, you don't do 5-star Copland in all missions, which thankfully makes it a lot safer um, in all missions, which is nice. So make sure to park in the rose bushes. Don't park too close to the mansion, because otherwise your heli will despawn. Take this call from Mitch Baker. And then hop towards the marker. So, here you need a wanted level. One of the quickest ways to get two stars is to just gun down your own men. That are hanging around the mansion. If you don't get that, then you can just rob a store on the way. There's two really good ones, stores that you can rob. There's um, the bunch of tools here, which you can see on the map. Uh, which is a nice safe one, because it has, you can, has a nice like heli landing zone where you can... Um, like a big open area where you can land the heli nice and safely. Or, if you're a big boy, you can rob the jewelry store on the way, which I'll show you. Which is... Um, Faster, but it's harder to land the helicopter there. So the jewelry store is around here on the map, and you can park on this road with the helicopter and rob it instead. But either way, park in these bushes. Make sure you got Lance with you. Wait for the two spawned cops. And then here you can either sprint into Lance or punch him to knock him over. And the reason you want to make sure that you um, go into these trees is that you have just enough time to fly away before Lance gets into the helicopter so you can ditch him. The reason you want to ditch him is because you don't need him for this section of the mission. And obviously Lance can die, so the, the less time we spend with him during the game, the better, essentially. But either way, with or without him, ideally without him. Go ahead and plant the bomb, pop out, grab the VTN heli, and fly away. Once this mission's done, head back into VCN Heli. And now you want to finally make that Cherry Poppers replay that you used to make over an hour ago. Because we do still need Cherry Poppers. Not only for the Insta Passing, but the fact that it's not it's A, an asset, and 2, a mission. <coughs> Excuse me. So, make the Cherry Poppers replay, and then head towards Stuntbuck Challenge. This is unfortunately another super boring grab the checkpoint mission. Uh, you can ditch the heli here, you don't need it anymore. We'll be uh, by warping back to Cherry Poppers after this. So yeah, this mission, super simple. Grab the checkpoint, drive the boat. Really easy. So we're going to speed it up. But thankfully this is the last uh, last one of those missions. So we'll get this one out of the way and I'll be back to you in a few.
So finally we're out of the woods of the boring shit. Now we can buy lots of cherry poppers. Now what we want to do here is immediately set up um, our Mission Zero Vigilante. And now we're going to do the Bombs Away Instapass. And also Friendly Rivalry Instapass and a bunch of other shit all into one big segment. So you make the save replay, take the anti-pulley call, head towards the police cheater, set up on Mission Zero Vigilante with the save marker. Now, it's worth noting here that you don't have to do Bombs Away Instapass. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do it otherwise, because it's quite a diff, uh, quite a big change. Um, but you can check my old guide on how to do this section the old way. But obviously, the whole point of this video is to show you with the new strats. Uh, but this Bombs Away Instapass is basically a coin flip. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Um, it's basically humanly impossible to, to make it consistent. And uh, I'll show you why in a second. But so with Omission Zero Vigilante, you want to make sure that you make the replay over here. Um, the reference for it that I use on the ground, this is to make a, a replay over the briefcase, which is going to spawn in the next mission. Is this the little uh, piece of, I don't know how to call it here, like a piece of floor here? Um, it's right next to it. So you see Mirishko makes like a running replay here. So you also do this jump. Uh, make sure that you don't hit that jump too fast, otherwise you'll trigger the unique stunt jump and you'll um, you'll end up, uh, what am I called, hitting the slow-mo. Uh, so Marushka is holding the call that he, that he got when he came out here, so he starts holding the call here. Uh, this is just another way of setting up a non-mission zero call. You can do it the old way that you used to, like that you did for 4 iron if you want to do it that way. It's completely up to you, that's what I do. Uh, but if you're doing it his way, then you just hold the call, cancel Vigilante, and then you have Omission Zero call. Answer it as you go into the marker. It'll soft lock, then you cancel it by getting back into the car. Now you have Omission Zero Juju Scramble. Now, it's really important for this next section that you don't grab this briefcase on the rooftop until the phone call comes in. Because once again, as soon as you grab the briefcase and you skip the cutscene, uh, then you'll get a wanted level, and you don't want that. So go into the cutscene, wait until the phone rings, then skip the cutscene, hold the call, hop back into your vehicle, complete the mission. Try not to get dicked too hard by the cops, it can happen, uh, but you really want to keep this police cheater if you can. If not, I guess you can steal one of theirs, uh, but again, just make sure it doesn't come to that. So again, Mirushka is playing quite safe, you know, shooting people uh, to get them out of their cars. And then make sure to keep holding the call. Re-enter the cheetah so it doesn't despawn. Make sure that you don't run across here uh, because the, the next mission will start if you do that. Take the call. Run towards Kaplan Cabs. Make the save replay. If you want to be super optimal, you can punch the door off the taxi here as Mirushka does. But this is quite tight timing, so if you're until you're confident, you can skip this bit and instead just run straight here after making the save replay. And then walk into the bombs away marker, but don't skip the cutscene. Once the phone call finishes, the mission will dupe. Now, once you start the second instance of the cutscene, skip it, and then don't touch the mouse as you come in. Jump, line the sniper up with this line up here so this little reticule that you have this circle you want to line it up with this white gap so you see you have like this leaf that comes out with all the long branches to so the top of it is that tiny little white gap i don't know how well you can see it in the video but i'm sure it's visible enough and you want to line the center of your left part of this circle crosshair up with um that white gap just to the right of it like that The re-aiming isn't necessary, uh, I think Marushka was just playing safe. And then you just want to keep banging, sometimes if a ped blocks it, it can take several shots. But you basically just want to fail the mission. Then you save warp with the cheetah, hop in and out of the taxi, that'll uh, instantly pass friendly rivalry. Now hop into the cheetah, set up on missions or a vigilante. Drive back towards bombs away, and here's the coin flip. So, 
You hop out with Vigilante running. Then you throw a grenade. Make sure that you don't throw a grenade in between two seams of geometry. So make sure that you throw it like you see Marishko's lands here. Um, so make sure to either throw it... I like throw it, you know, right on top of the marker, basically. Uh, because there's a chance that if you get unlucky, you can... Uh, it'll go through the floor, and that's really bad. So you throw um, the grenade, and then walk into the marker. The grenade will knock you out of the marker, and then as you as you start this, skip the cutscene, and immediately mash space as hard as you can, okay? So we'll go through that again, but basically what you need to do is you need to knock yourself out of the marker to start them, because otherwise you'll start Dirty Lickens immediately, and you'll fail, the, you'll crash the game, Okay. So, again, you walk in, throw the grenade, knock yourself out, skip the cutscene, and then mash jump. And if you're lucky, and you, like, mash on the right frame, then uh, you'll jump out. If you're unlucky, you'll start Dirty Lickens and crash the game. That's the coin flip. Because even if you mash seemingly perfectly, you can still, uh, like, fail sometimes. But assuming that all goes right, push... Um, Sorry, save what back. Push this taxi out of the way so you don't accidentally start uh, Cadmageddon. Hop in, start taxi to kill the instance of bombs away. And then set up on mission zero taxi. Hold down um, taxi all the way. This is setting up on mission zero taxi. I don't think it's ever been done before. So I'll quickly uh, explain how it works. Because it's slightly different for vigilante. Instead of vigilante, you can uh, get out and hold the button at any time. What you do is as soon as you warp, you let go and you hold submission again. Because if you don't, then when you hop out of the vehicle, then a taxi will fail. But if you let go once you warp to set up on Mission Zero Taxi and immediately hold the submission button again, you'll still be on taxi, then you can let go once the call comes in. And you'll have an on Mission Zero call for Dirty Lickens as well. Now hop back into your cheater that you left there. Hold the call, answer it during this section, grab your grenades, there's two different groups here, you want to nade the left side, just blow them all up, and then just start banging out the cumans on the right side, you can use the reload cancel here, and then once this spawns you can use either the M4 which I prefer, or the sniper rifle to blow this up, it's up to you, and then, excuse me, is this uh, little group on the left hand side which you can just spray down with the M4. Rushko almost killed all the uh, Haitians there. That was almost bad. Hop back in your cheetah. Uh, you want to start Vigilante here. Because of the weird uh, Bombs Away and Splash, you'll have to start it twice. So press Submission once and then Submission a second time to get Vigilante to start. Now pull into here. Hop out. Since you have Vigilante running, you're on Mission, zero, uh, on mission 1. Sorry. Make the Tech 9 replay. Now cancel Vigilante, hop out by Printworks, then hop in and then Vigilante start um, the Tech 9 Rampage. Remember to cancel Vigilante before you hop into the marker, otherwise you'll crash the game. Start spilling the beans. Now this is fairly standard to no SSU, um, but you don't have a katana. You make the save replay. Take the taxi, go into the Malibu, blah, blah, blah. Inferno spawn is quite nice here. Otherwise, you would obviously take the taxi or run. It's up to you if you want the armor. Hop on the PCJ and then fly all the way to the boat, as is standard.
can grab armor here if you missed it before. Careful for that guy since you obviously can't knock him down with the katana in this. Now you need to get your uh, phone call back, so you need to bribe all your two wanted stars. Exactly the same as no SSU. Then walk back and do three cherry popper instances. Uh, Marushko does the double fade skips here. You don't have to do this, you can just do the way that you know it in uh, no SSU. Obviously the fade skips are faster, but they're optional. So this is where the second of two Mandupes come in. Um, if you want to be as fast as possible, you follow Marushko's here. But once uh, this section's done, I'll show you how you do it the safer way. Um, but essentially, Marushko is going to do two Cherry Popper instances and then two Hit the Coria instances. Whereas the safe way, Manduplus, is to do um, three Cherry Poppers and one Hit the Coria. So if you're going fast, two cherry poppers, make the tech nine replay. Then you cut through here on the way to Camageddon. Park the bike. Run into the save icon and Mandoop. If you get it, then good job. Start Camageddon to insta pass it. Then hop back on the bike. And continue on. So with Camageddon done, you start hit the courier. Um, I believe with hit the courier, if you're doing two times cherry poppers and man duping, then it's really important here that you skip this cutscene when you start hit the courier as soon as possible. So make sure to mash mega hard. And uh, if that's wrong, then don't blame me. You didn't. You didn't hear it from me. Make the save replay. Uh, yeah, do the mission, and then go ahead and head towards your Gutch car. I'll quickly switch now to show you how you do it the three times cherry popper way. So after three cherry popper runs to passes, if you want to do this the safe way, uh, you do exactly the same thing with the Tech Nine Rampage, where you hold the call. Go make the Tech 9 replay. And then head towards Camageddon. But instead, you want to cancel the Camageddon in instance with Taxi itself. <clears throat> so you go and start the mission, but then keep the taxi and drive towards Hit the Courier while the dialogue is taking place. We can quickly skip through this. So once the mission is complete, uh, then you start taxi to then kill the Camp Megan instance. There's a glitch that can happen here um, where you'll have like a pedestrian that's stuck uh, when you start this. Um, and they'll basically, they'll basically be like uh, a hanging instance of taxi around. So if you go to save the game or anything and play safe, uh, this doesn't really matter too much in this new route, but just in case you go to save the game, you'll crash because of that uh, leftover ped. What you can do to avoid that, um, if you want to play safe and save and load the game, is just drive away from the ped that spawns on the map um, and despawn them, and then you'll be good. But then otherwise, um, you just go and start hit the courier as normal. Just make sure that you use taxi to cancel the second instance of Camageddon. And then we'll hop back to Marushko. Okay, so wherever your glitch car is that you got, um, you can you can obviously do it before hit the courier, or if you got one on the main road here, that's great. 
go and grab it and head towards the docks. Uh, something that's important to note as well is the timer matters for when you enter, uh, hit the courier. Usually the reference is around 1.30, but obviously if you're doing the Mandoop route, then you just get and start it as soon as possible. Uh, so as close to 1.30 as you can is the best way to look at it. But 1.20 is fine if you have the PCJ and you're going to grab a sports car like you had before. But if you're ever in doubt, use 1.30 as a reference on the Rampage timer to start the mission. This is because you want to have enough time to go to the bomb shop with this glitched car, but also have enough time to um, be there for when the courier lands and you can kill her as she, as she gets out the helicopter. So you take a glitch car here, you take it to the bomb shop. Uh, this is all a big setup for double instapass that starts now. Double instapass is pretty complicated. Um, I'll do my best to explain it as we go. But you want to make sure that you rig this glitched car with a bomb, so now you have a glitched and rigged car. Now you want to park it around here in this little compound. Hop out and you'll have a detonator. For some reason this detonator, when you have it in your hand, you can't switch away from it. The only way that you can switch away from it is by going to buy like a melee weapon from a tool store, or by having a rampage run out because that resets your weapon. So we're going to do that here, but just keep that in mind. The detonator is at the bottom of your inventory. So like past the sniper rifle and shit like that. So make sure that you don't accidentally switch to it because you won't be, you'll be stuck on it. And you'll have to go to the tool store or something like that. So there's two helicopters here because uh, Marushko duped the mission. Usually there'll only be one for you if you're starting out doing this. But either way, just shoot the one, uh, either the only one or the one that's coming to hit the ground while you take the call, then head back to your glitch car, wait for the call to finish. And then take your glitch car to where the police cheater is. And there's a slight deviation here as well, um, depending on uh, if you're going to uh, what's what I'm looking for? If you're going to uh, Mandoop or not. I believe that this little section here isn't faster if you if you didn't Mandoop Camageddon. So if you did, then you immediately save what back. You can you can hop back into the marker and start the mission again. It doesn't make a difference. Make sure you re-enter the Cheetah because it will despawn otherwise. Then you head to the Katana Rampage. Wait for the CTC call. Make a replay over the Katana Rampage, and then come back and start CTC. But, if you um, if you didn't Mandu, um, I'll show you the other way to deal with this section. So, if you're doing uh, the mandu plus route, then uh, my glitch car here is the Greenwood. Um, it's exactly the same, just a slower variant. Um, and then you just head towards the, um, the Police Cheetah, as Marushko does. But instead we're going to set up um, so we get the instant CTC call as soon as we start the mission. So hold the call here, head into the police cheater. Then as soon as you turn this corner to the right, bam, let go of, of the call. And then this will time it. So once you get out of the car and jump over the marker to not restart the mission like this. Then once you finish the mission, you'll immediately get the CTC call. So as you'll see in a second. So you beat the mission. And then bam, you have the instant CTC call that you can answer. And then you just get in and out of the cheetahs, make sure it doesn't despawn. And then you start CTC, nice and easy. So either way you start CTC, uh, you can do the CTC snipe in all missions. But it depends, again, uh, you have no glitch cars, so you have one glitch car. So as you can see, Marushko got unlucky, and uh, the guys got blocked, so you don't do the CTC snipe. If they get stuck, then you can go ahead and do the snipe as per usual. If not, just go and run them over with a cheater.
And since we have a car here rather than a bike in no SSU, you can just run into them and knock them off. And I want you to kill these last set of guys. Uh, you can... So you don't need to re-enter there. Uh, this is a minor optimization thing. Um, but what you want to do is you want to restart. Um, rampage start the... Uh, rampage start Vigilante. Or Vigilante start, you know, the Rampage, whichever way. Uh, so you have an On Mission Zero Rampage... Um, with either the Katana or the Tech 9. Depending on the route, you'll have a different Rampage, but it doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, you can keep the Cheetah all the way here, um, or you can do what Marishka does and switch to the bike. You're on a timer anyway, um, but depending on where you finish Cap the Collector, uh, if you finish all the way back up there like Marushko does, then obviously the bike makes more sense, um, because you might not make it you know, with the, with the timer. But if you finish like here because you miss a set of collectors, then you can just keep the car. Doesn't make too much of a difference. Either way, just make sure you have the on mission zero rampage running, then hop over this wall and start keep your friends close. Answer the call, obviously, because you need to to unlock it. Start the mission. If you're new to doing um, double insta pass, as soon as you start the mission, uh, you should make a save replay here. As soon as you spawn in, you stand on where the save marker is. So just stand still and make a save replay here. It doesn't look like Marushko makes one, and I'm not, I'm interested to see exactly like what he does instead. <clears throat> also here. Um, I don't believe Marushka does this either, but I would recommend putting this white Infernus in the garage behind you because there's a chance that later on when you go to use it, um, it'll despawn. But obviously if it's in the garage, then it'll never despawn. So instead of taking this Infernus in particular um, over towards your glitch car, which we're going to pick up now, you can instead park this one in the garage, run over, grab this Banshee, which is on the right here, and drive down to the Infernus. Um, because you're on a timer, it takes the same amount of time, uh, since you're waiting for the timer anyway, and it's more consistent, because you don't have to rely on the inf uh, Infernus potentially despawning. So it's, exact it's not slower, and it's safer, so I'd recommend doing that. But either way, uh, grab your glitch car, with the bomb strapped to it, and now you're basically waiting um, on the Rampage timer to run out. So just make sure that you're somewhere on Starfish Island once it runs out. <clears throat> and then once it finishes... Okay, so Marushko does make a save replay. This looks like he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't like in a fade or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, so save warp, drive straight forward. And then after this cutscene, you see how Marushko's looking backwards. Uh, this is so you don't get shot as much, because these guys can shoot you quite a lot. Make sure that you drive backwards, drive straight forward, so hold W, into the doors, so you, like, appear back in the mansion. And then drive the car, like, halfway up the stairs, so half of the car um, is, like, um, I guess it depends on the size of the vehicle, act actually. But with a big car like this, uh, just make sure that, so Sunny spawns, like, around here, right? And basically the idea of the double insta pass is that we want to make sure that we have like our rigged car ready to blow up Sunny. So the closer to him the better, but we don't want to block him. So this is a pretty good reference. Uh, make sure that your car is like, as I say, about half of it is on the stairs and about half of it is off. That's what I've always used and it's worked just fine. Now, um, when you get out of the car, make sure that you don't run like... Um, 
in the middle of the stairs because you can start the mission again if your phone isn't ringing. Your phone should be ringing, but there's a chance that it won't be um, if you mess something up. So you can go for the fast kill um, on Landstair if you want to like knock him down with a katana and shoot him. But otherwise you can just do the regular one. And make sure you hold the call before it goes away. <clears throat> now you can do what you usually do in OSSU or you can hop this way, it's completely up to you. Heal if you need to, then go and fight Sunny. So make sure you still have the call held. And then prepare your revolver. Because for this you need to damage Sunny four times with the revolver. That's the reference. And then the car bomb will kill him. Because you want to kill him remotely. This is what the double pass is all about. So you prep the revolver. You shoot Sunny four times. One, two, three, four. Then you take the call so they don't shoot you and kill you. And then hop in the Infernus. This is where there's a chance that the Infernus can just not be here, and that's why I said to put this in the garage before. If it doesn't spawn, then just grab the one that you put in the garage. If not, then you're good. Either way, head towards the Malibu. Get your Detonator ready. And then uh, Marushko uses a certain reference here, so you need to time blowing up the car and entering the job. Because what we need to do is we need to start the job mission in order to insta-pass it during the fade after we kill Sunny. okay? So Marushko's reference for this is to prep it on the stairs and then to sprint into the marker from there. What I do is I'll show you is I stand at the top of these stairs, like at the top middle, blow it up, and then just hold W towards the marker, because you'll be walking with the sniper rifle. That's my reference, and it works for me 100% of the time. The references are all preference, doesn't really make a difference. This one is obviously faster, because you're sprinting. Uh, but if you'll know that you've done it right if you see Tommy here sat with the car on top of him. Uh, if you've done it wrong, then you'll either just pass uh, KYFC normally uh, if you're too slow, or if you're too early, you'll crash the game. So the timing is very important. I'll quickly show you my reference, because I think it makes it a bit easier. So here's my reference. Head to the top middle of the stairs, press it, and then just look and hold W. And then I like run around... Um, I'll show you it again. So you'll automatically switch to your sniper rifle and then just hold W and then just run around the counter like that. And that's my reference. I think that's uh, easier than Marush goes, but again, it's preference. Up to you. This is going to be Either way, you've successfully interfaced the job. Seriously, Congratulations. That's the, the first the part of the double interface out the, the way. You now you're just kind of in the void no listening to the cutscene. Wait for the call to come in and take it. But aside from that, you can't do anything, so just chill. Didn't do Russia any favors, huh? Calm down, all right? With a team like this, it's going to be no problem. We got Camon safe. When this call comes in in a second. Now. Take this call. Somebody who helped you to no end in this town. Someone. Yeah, that's right. Can't hear. He washes the money for us. He keeps the drinks on ice. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. Look. Now just wait for the cutscene to finish. We walk into the bank. We wave the gun around and leave very rich men. I'll drive. Now you're in an instance of the job, and we're going to use this instance to inst pass keep your friends close. So you want to get all your boys with you. And we need to softlock a dialogue line here. So softlocking dialogue lines isn't super uh, complicated. All that you need to do is trigger the dialogue line. Um, uh, while, like, somebody's talking, basically. Uh, so, tri sorry, tr uh, trigger the phone to ring while somebody's talking. So the way Marushko does this is he um, sets up the the save warp beforehand um, and then he knocks off the door 
teleports, gets out, gets back in, gets out again, and then starts the mission. So that's a fairly... Um, it's the quickest way to do it, but I would say it's not very beginner friendly. So I'll show you my way of doing it, which I think is uh, a chunk easier. So give me a second. So what I do here is I don't uh, do the save wall properly, uh, or sorry, preemptively. What I do is I pull into the Starfish Islands to make sure that you see the text. Then I get out, the phone will ring over the dialogue line, which you're supposed to, so it's soft locked. Hop back in. Wait until you're on mission zero so you can see these um, the icons. Then save warp, hop out the car, start the mission. And that has the exact same effect, it's just slightly slower. What's important is that you get out of the car while Phil says, Hey Tommy, why have we stopped? That soft locks his dialogue line and that allows you to insta pass the mission. Very important. So whichever way you do it, make sure that you have that nailed down. Otherwise, again, you'll crash the game. Now we have two extra mission instances running. So currently we have uh, one instance of KOIFC here. So all you want to do is take the taxi outside, throw a grenade at the ground, blow yourself up. Make sure that you're on the western part uh, of this uh, section. Because if you're on the east, then you'll spawn all the way at the eastern island. But you want to spawn at the western island. So now we need to cancel another instance that's left over. Okay? So... What Marushko does here is another coin flip as to whether it crashes the game or not. He's going to dupe Vigilante, which will kill the instance. But again, chance it can crash the game, completely random. If you want to risk it, then you can do what Marushko does. If you don't want to risk it and play safe, all you should do is run over to where the ocean is here, hold the call that comes in, and then just drown with, with holding the call. Since you're holding the call, you're on mission one, and you'll kill the instance. And then you can go and do what Marushko does without risking the crash. Otherwise, if you want to just be a man mode about it, then go ahead and do this. So make the save replay. Then take the call when it comes in. And then just go and start Vigilante and risk the coin flip. So again, to remind you, if you want to be safe, you should kill the instance first by drowning, then make the save replay, then take the call, and then uh, go into the, the police cheater. But otherwise, so you see he gets the $50, which means Vigilante is successfully duped. Then he sets up on Mission Zero Vigilante. So again, if you want to be safe, uh, cancel the instance, and then set up on Mission Zero Vigilante with drowning. Either way, hold on Mission Zero Vigilante when you get out of the car, wait for the call to come in, then let go of Vigilante so you have an on Mission Zero call. Start loose ends, grab the M4 around the corner, careful not to get stuck in the wall. Glitch the call, go ahead and run all the way through here, grab this Spaz 12, it's super useful. Jump down, grab the armor in the corner. You have time since you're on a super long phone call anyway. Now head towards um, the roof. All the way up through this really long convoluted pathway. Get the health if you need it. Kill these guys because you're on a timer with the call anyway. So it's safe to just to kill them. Since they might shoot you if you get into the helicopter otherwise. Grab your spaz, gun all these guys down, grab the briefcase and the ammo. Now hop in the helicopter and fly to the, to the airport to end the mission. Nice and easy. So as you can see, quite a lot of guys shoot at you, so the more you kill the better. But just make sure that you don't spend your time killing all of them. Uh, just kill a couple that you while you're on the phone call so you don't lose any time. But otherwise, just do a little pit stop at the airport. And then fly all the way to Phil's place. So we're on the home stretch now. About 10 minutes left from here. But unfortunately, we have uh, one of the most AIDS missions left. 
two of them actually I would say this uh, this end game is not particularly fun it's very relentless So prop the heli down, cancel the call that comes in, start a gun runner. This mission is awful because um, the idea here is that you've got to steal weapons uh, off the top of some trucks and also blow up the trucks. And there's a chance that the weapons can spawn at coordinates 0, 0, 0 which is out of bounds. And so the only choice is you have to deliberately kill yourself or fail the mission somehow. Uh, and then retry it. It's completely random. I don't believe there's any way that we know to stop it from happening. But blow up those guys with the Spaz-12. Grab the guns. Be sure to not run too far away from uh, this. Uh, the little Patriot that you have. Because if you do, it can despawn. Dodge past the Fagio squad. Try not to get murked. Now I'll do the same for these two guys, but you obviously drive a bit past them so you can get out and shoot them. Marushko uses this like this wall as a reference, just drive into it. Hop out, grab the shotgun, gun these guys down. And now before you grab the last gun, wait for the Fagio squad to arrive. Grab it, unaggro them by beating the mission, then steal a Fagio. It's the fastest vehicle you have around for now. And now, you want to take Phil's phone call here. You can get two different phone calls um, in the hierarchy based on which area you win, you're in. Sorry. If you're in downtown, you'll get Phil's call. If you're in Little Haiti, which is the one like to the south of here, then you'll get uh, Auntie Paule's call, which is useless. So you want to make sure that your phone rings while you're in downtown. The way you can consistently do this is by taking a right into the car park Pulling up to this ramp and taking the call before you go over this ramp. This is still downtown. Once you get to around here, like where this next road is, then you're in Little Haiti and you'll waste like 20 seconds having to wait for Phil's call. So take this call before you go in. Then you can hop over the wall and run to Phil while the call's taking place. So, Boomshine Saigon, uh, the reason Marushko paused there is because you're basically uh, dealing with like drunk driving controls for this section. Uh, but if you pause and unpause, then you get the regular driving controls back, so you can do these, do these uh, corners much easier. I'd recommend pausing and unpausing once for this corner, and then once you get to the first marker out of two, uh, then you can pause and unpause again. Because, unfortunately, uh, the pause and pause trick only makes you lose the drunk physics for a bit. Like a short amount of time. So yeah, now you can use the pause and pause trick. Uh, Marushka did it a bit earlier than I do, but you can do it like any time around the marker or before it, because it lasts for quite a while. So you can do the two corners nice and easy, much easier with regular driving controls. Then pull into the marker, nice and easy. And now this next mission is full of unskippable cutscenes, which is kind of AIDS, but mission itself isn't too hard. Keep the Patriot that you're in. And uh, there's a number of places you can park it, but there is a despawn radius, so be careful. Uh, Marushko parks it on the corner. I park it right in front of the, like, line it up with the cafe entrance. That's my reference to make sure it doesn't despawn. Because then also you need a four-person car here. So obviously the Patriot is perfect. And when I park it, it goes, it's already right in the marker. So I think that's more optimal than what Marushko does. But up to you. If you need to heal here because there's a lot of combat, there's armor just on the east side here. Um, it's behind some bushes in the back garden of this house. But Mushka's on full health, so he's good. <clears throat> I 
Otherwise, just head towards the marker. This is one of the really rare markers in the game that you don't have to stop in. You can just hold W and it'll stop you as you hit it. Not sure why that's the thing, but... So the way this mission works is there's certain checkpoints that you need to hit. Otherwise, these guys will just spawn infinitely. So you need to blow up this car. Otherwise, infinite of these guys will spawn. So the first thing you should do is pull out the M60, blow up the car, then kill these two guys. If you do it in the other order, you'll kill... You'll kill... You'll have to kill more guys than you uh, than you should. Now there's a long unskippable cutscene. on the roof. They fight like girls. Take cover. We need reinforcements from the cafe. Now the same applies here. Uh, there's a bunch of guys that will come. You'll see them in a second. There they are. And if you don't kill this sniper first, then they'll infinitely respawn. So kill the sniper first. Then kill these guys one by one. And then there's a guy hiding around here. So you can just use the right click of the M60 to kill him. But just be wary of him because he hides around the corner. Now there's no need to fight any more guys. You just need to get the van and get out. But you need to do like a, a U-turn here, and you don't want to get your tires popped. So the most consistent way to deal with this is to push the back of the van so you can spin it around like that, and then hop in and drive away. As you can see, you can still get your tires popped. You should also drive by that guy at the gate because you can pop your tires as well. So you can still get your tires popped. Also, Rico can teleport for some reason. Not sure why that happens, but you don't need him, so fuck him. <coughs> But yeah, so you just want to minimize the chances of getting your tires popped here, basically. Also, I'll always point this out whenever I do tutorials. Uh, a weird little thing here is the light pole, for, for some reason, is uh, is on the roof, for some reason, here. So, yeah, nice little factoid there for you. That light pole spawns on the roof. And this mission is like a perfect opportunity to see it. So whack the mark, uh, the van into the marker. Now it's time for naval engagement. So again, uh, Marushka does a fairly risky strat here. You want to start off by getting just any car you can, the faster the better. And then if you want to see the mega risky way to do it, I'll show you it. But then if you want to see the 100% uh, the consistent way, then I'll show you that too. So if you need to heal, I would recommend having at least 100 health for this segment. Uh, there's armor and health near the boat, just uh, underneath the little walkway down to the boat. And there's armor here that you saw before during Spoon the Beans. Would recommend healing for this segment if you're on low health. Punch Rico for good measure. It's not faster, but it's funny. And now avoid taking as much damage as possible, so bring out the M60, go first person and crouch. So then again, your hitbox is smaller, so you in theory take less damage. Wipe those guys out. And you need to grab three briefcases. So the risky way to do it is to just kill everyone and basically do intended strats. Kill these guys on the left side. Grab the briefcases, which gives you four stars. And then drive back with the one stalker. So I'll quickly pause it here and I'll show you the uh, the more consistent way. The reason why this is inconsistent is because now you have four stars, right? And from all the duping that you've done and insta passing, the game is in a really unstable state. And if you have four stars, the spike strips that uh, cops spawn when you have three stars or more uh, are really poorly coded. Uh, basically, there's a crash in this game when the game spawns too many objects, so the object pool is like overloaded or overflowed, and then it'll crash the game consistently. And every single spike strip is coded as an individual object. So like if you think of one spike strip that comes down, it's like 13 objects in of itself. So if cops throw like three or more spike strips, which they probably will on this mission, your game will crash, and that's run over. 
So there's a way to avoid this four-star wanted level, but it's slightly slower. So that if you want to risk it like Marushko, because obviously it's faster to not do the slower strat, then uh, go ahead and risk it. But I wouldn't recommend it unless you're going for world record. So I'll show you how to avoid this crash 100% of the time. So what you want to do is you want to still grab the, um, the what is it called? The briefcase at the docks, but you want to kill um, the people here uh, you don't have to worry about this guy, uh, but I would recommend... I don't think I killed this guy either, uh, but you basically want to wipe, wipe as many as you think is safe, uh, but don't kill everyone. And you want to definitely keep this guy alive. Very important. Because this is the guy that drops the two briefcases, right? So I killed those two guys, and I killed the guy on the left, because I'm going to have to run past him otherwise. Then I grabbed the briefcase at the back, then I run towards this guy, punch him with the gun, then make a walking replay around his corpse where the briefcases are going to spawn, then kill him, then go here, okay? So basically what that's done is that you only get the four-star wanted level once you pick up those last two briefcases. So what we're going to intentionally do is pick them up in a replay at the end of the mission so you skip the drive with the four-star wanted level. You only get the four-star wanted level once you're already back at the cafe and you can just pass the mission instantly. So you skip that wanted level and you never crash. Obviously, it's slower because you have to, you know, be more methodical with how you deal with it to make sure you don't get three stars, which you will if you kill everyone. Um, but yeah, it's much safer and I would hugely recommend practicing this strat if you want to get through all missions consistently. All right, so whichever way you do it, uh, head here and grab the Landstalker. Then just make sure you avoid the cops as much as possible, regardless of whether you're on two stars or four stars. Also make sure not to flip the Landstalker out, obviously. And then, if you're doing safe strats, you hop out here, but obviously there'll be no marker. Just play the replay of you picking up uh, the briefcases, then the cutscene will play of the boat getting blown up, and then you can just immediately go into the marker. Exactly the same as here, just in a different order. And now this last mission is super easy, um, you know, compared to compared to the others that you've just done. One thing to note is that when you start Trojan Voodoo, it's the same as keep your friends close for some reason. If you mash to skip this cutscene, it'll take longer. So just press shift once or sprint or whatever your key is. I keep saying shift. People don't use, not everyone uses shift. Just skip it once. The same as keep your friends close. Now I'll bring Pepe, your new buddy, your new Cuban buddy since Rico died. Spoilers. I guess it's not spoilers, it already happened. Bring him to the fixed spawn voodoo because you need uh, a, a Haitian gang car for this mission. Then head past print, print works. Then take the western path. Cut through this little corner section. Try not to flip your car. Jesus, Marushka. And then meet up with your. Uh, Amigos here. Hola, amigos. Oye, the salvage is around the back, amigos. Bueno, putas. Muerte. Vamos. Vamos. Vamos, indeed. Salud, my compadres. You lost, man? So, a couple of things here. You basically want to get to the start of the queue, so you can, like, push these guys out of the way. So, ugh. Oh. oh, excuse me. So you want to push um, this guy to the left and then head to the right and then press your sprint key or your horn key, I think it is, um, to use your like hydraulics to jump over these guys and push them out of the way. Make sure that you don't drive too aggressively because you can make this guy dive out of the way, but he's the one who needs to open the gate for you. So if you're too aggressive and too close to the gate, then he'll dive and you have to wait for him to get back up and slowly walk back to the gate to open it here. But once you're pushed past, then you want to drive through. Drive into the building, hop out, 
and everyone will instantly spawn in front of you. Because you're not supposed to get there that quickly. Plant the three bombs. Don't kill anyone. Just run through and tank it. If you need health during this mission, because uh, you're going to die, then I'll go ahead and point out a health spawn. It's just outside here. You can grab it on the way and all the way back. It's totally up to you. But just on the right hand side here, just out of frame, there is a health spawn. So if you're on low health and you feel like you're going to die, then grab that. Otherwise, just head up the stairs and you lose control as you go onto the... Um, as you go onto the rooftop because you've got like a certain distance away. And congratulations, that's the new route for all missions. The actual route itself is only different for about the second third. But I thought I'd redo the whole thing since there are some minor and sometimes even major optimizations um, in the earlier and later stages of the run. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions um, about the new old missions route or anything like that, uh, you'll find my Twitter, Discord, uh, blah, blah, blah. Or you can just leave a comment here. Um, I'll link all the resources that you need to start speedrunning this game in the description, including my NoSSU speedrun guide. Um, if you want to get properly into the game, thank you once again to Marushko for providing me the uh, the lovely video of his. Because he, uh, even though he did crash a lot in this, does play the game a lot better than me. He is a lot faster. So it's good to show you the, the most optimal ways. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck on your speedruns.